I remember being a teenager going to the record store. I'd browse through the racks of albums, analyzing the cover art, and reading through the liner notes, trying to figure out which one to buy with my hard-earned cash. Buying an album wasn't just a purchase. It was a way to prove my fandom for a particular band, artist, or even a movement, a tangible way to show my passion and connect with a community of like-minded individuals. It was a personal and emotional experience that I will always treasure. Pirate Bay, iTunes, Spotify, and now we have all the music in the world right here in our pocket. But in that, we lost part of that connection we had via the album. Today, I want to talk about how we can not only recreate, but potentially even enhance that connection with the tools that are about to be given to us by the metaverse. But what do those tools look like today? For the past 10 years, I've been working as a songwriter and producer in the world of K-pop. If you're a K-pop fan, you've probably heard some of my songs, and without knowing it, you've been listening to some Swedish guy singing in Korean. <laughs> I don't speak Korean. In 2013, I had my first K-pop release. This is before it became the global phenomenon that it is today. But it didn't take long to realize that something special was happening in K-pop. I stumbled upon a YouTube video of a sold-out stadium in Seoul with thousands of fans singing along, cheering along, dancing along in a very coordinated manner that I hadn't really seen before. And to make it even more peculiar, this went up the same day as the album came out. Well, it turns out, K-pop fans will assemble in the morning, go to the record store, buy the album, group up into groups of concert goers, and practice these chants, moves, and coordinate outfits to get the most out of the experience. <laughs> K-pop was offering new ways for fans to connect with physical packaging that enhanced both the real world and digital experience. Unlike in the West, K-pop albums came with merchandise, like a passport to get stamped at concerts, unique limited edition trading cards, and even branded jewelry unique to your particular fandom. They didn't just buy albums either, but K-pop made buying albums even better. Then the genre matured and became more authentic when bands like BTS started singing about the stresses and troubles of everyday life, and Blackpink went against the grain and redefined femininity. Now, many of the bands I work with are selling out mega stadiums like the Tokyo Dome three, four nights in a row. K-pop went global, despite the immense drawback of a language barrier and continues to be the fastest growing music culture movement since pop music. Well, at least until COVID hit. When COVID came around, many of us in the industry were worried about the impact it would have on our livelihood. Concerts are a big deal, and they weren't happening anymore. February, March, April, and then something incredible happened online concerts became a thing, and K-pop fans were willing to pay for those tickets. This led to me working on a project to not only bring a K-pop concert to the screen, but to bring a live K-pop star into the metaverse. We brought on Alexa, an artist I've worked with since 2019, when we did her first single, Bomb. And we set out to do what we do best, we were going to put on a show. Let's bring a live concert into the metaverse. The result didn't quite live up to our expectations. <laughs> Turns out, a lot of the things that we love and appreciate from a real-world live concert doesn't translate to the virtual one. So we had to look elsewhere for those interactions. And where do we turn? We turned to video games. We added things like story and narrative. We assigned people missions. We gave them real-world physics but we gave them the ability to sort of mess with those. People loved that. Uh, we also gave them emotes, specific dance moves. So they could dance along to the concert. And maybe most important of all, we gave the players the ability to contact and talk to Alexa directly during the show. The result was an entirely new connection between the artist and the audience. But now all of a sudden, 
the individuals in the audience. Their unique participation played an entirely different role in the flow and outcome of the show. The result was a connection and online experience unlike any I've ever experienced before. And what we did there was just the tip of the iceberg. Technology greatly shapes the way we interact with entertainment. And now, just like music, games are going through some similar shifts. Gamers, like music fans, root a lot of their friendships, hobbies, and identity in their particular game fandom. Also, like the music industry, games have gone through a shift from physical to digital and now streaming. And who's to say we don't lose something there too? Thankfully, the metaverse has the opportunity to spare us from that loss by offering all of you the opportunity to buy in in whichever way you want with your assets without having to disregard the amazing access. It's an add-on. But just owning an asset doesn't necessarily warrant an experience. It's a springboard. The interactions that follow are where the magic happens. But what are these interactions that we oh so crave? Well, I break them down into three separate categories. Personal, group, and interpersonal. Or simply, burger, fries, milkshake. <laughs> Think of it as if you're reading a book. You get the story, the burger. And hopefully it's exhilarating and it takes you to this otherworldly place of adventure. Now, I want you to imagine that you're going to a book club. You put the book down a long time ago, but you're feeling excited. You're looking forward to meeting your fellow readers and talking about the adventure you went through when you were reading the book. And you're also looking forward to hearing about how they experienced flipping through those pages too. That's the milkshake. But the same feeling can be sparked from the group experience. The, OMG, did that just happen? And you turned to your friend and they freaking saw it too. It could have been a moment that lasted for as little as a microsecond. But you may speak of this moment a thousand more times throughout your life. Shared moments are the most powerful tool we have when it comes to building relationships. And I believe the metaverse will do so even better than K-pop. What K-pop did was incredible. By bridging the gap between album and merchandise, the album, album maintained its relevance despite the dawn of streaming. The true creators of the metaverse will create assets that have intrinsic value to the world in which they inhabit. Instead of an album, you may get a key that opens up a door to an experience built just for you. Or maybe there's other key holders, and maybe you can't even buy this key. It has to be earned through your involvement and unique participation in your community of fandom. The metaverse won't just change the way we interact with games and music. The metaverse will be the democratization of pop culture, an experience currently outpriced for the most of the world. <sighs> Imagine a world where everyone can go backstage. Everyone can talk to their favorite stars, together with your closest and most distant friends. The winners of the metaverse won't be who has the most money or the best tech. It'll be whoever can give me that feeling I had as a teenager with my first album, to the teenagers of today, logging on to the metaverse for the very first time. Thank you.